Welcome to the tutorial for Complicated, originally by Avril Lavigne, but then turned into a Nightcore version by Andy Case. Nightcore is an interesting genre. It speeds up an existing song, adding some stuff to it, so it's a DJ sort of genre, and it results in a song that's very much higher pitched and faster and often happier than the original. I'd like to thank Weird Potato Katricia for suggesting the song as a play along. Before I go any further today, the ukulele I'm going to be using for this play along is a mainland mahogany concert ukulele with kids ukulele strings. Mainland is a company in Indiana that imports ukuleles, I believe from Thailand, and they are a great value for the money and they do a lot of stuff to help the ukulele community and other things. So it has closed gear tuners, solid wood, um, very much budget priced for a solid wood instrument, but great construction and a great deal. And if you're looking for a ukulele, check out Mainland Ukuleles. So let's take a look at the chords that you're going to need for this song. The song ends up being in the key of G, which I've brought down a little bit from the night chord version. The original song by Avril Lavigne is actually a full octave plus lower. So this song will need seven chords, and it's interesting because these chords are different than the chords that are used in the original song. But the speeding up of the song and adding some elements to it changes the harmonies a little bit, at least to my ear. The first chord that we're gonna make is the G chord. So you'll put your first finger on the third string, second fret, second finger on the first string, second fret, and third finger on the second string, third fret, making a little V shape. That's your G chord. The second chord that you'll play is the E minor chord. You'll put your first finger on the first string, second fret, second finger goes on the second string, third fret, and the third finger goes on the third string, fourth fret. That's the E minor chord. The third chord that you'll make is the C chord. For that chord, you'll simply use the third finger on the first string, third fret. The next chord is the D chord. You can play it any number of ways. You're gonna be playing on the second fret strings four, three, and two. The ways that are commonly used are to use fingers one, two, and three on strings four, three, and two. You can also put the first finger on the third string at the very, very top of the second fret and then put the other two fingers around it. So the second finger will reach over to the fourth string second fret and the third finger will go to the second string second fret. That's another way to play D. If you take a look at that, that's like a G7 chord inverted, a little triangle shape. Next way that some people play D is to just use two fingers. They cover strings four and three on the second fret with one finger, and then they put the second finger on the second string second fret, leaving the first string alone. And the final way that people play D is they'll use one finger and they'll bend it so that they do not touch the first string and they just hold down strings two, three, and four on the second fret. The next chord you're going to play is the D sus4, and there are a number of ways to do that depending on how you played D originally. If you play D with just fingers one, two, and three, the D sus4 is easiest played by putting the first finger on the fourth string second fret, second finger on the third string second fret, and third finger on the second string third fret. If you play the D chord like I play the E chord, putting the first finger on the third string, second fret, and then building around it, the easiest way to do that is to, again, keep the first finger on the third string, second fret, add the second finger to the fourth string, second fret, and then move your third finger, instead of being in that V shape, down one fret on the second string to the third fret. The next chord you're gonna need is the E minor seven chord. The first finger is going to go on the third string, second fret, and the second finger is going to go on the first string, second fret, with a gap in between them. That's the E minor seven chord. The last chord you're going to need is the A minor seven chord. And for this chord, you don't have to put any fingers down on the left hand at all. It's just an open chord. 
When it comes to strumming patterns in the song, I have given a number of suggestions for strumming patterns. However, feel free not to use them. That said, I wanted to show you those strumming patterns and also talk about some finger picking patterns that you can use. Using the standard progression in the song, E minor to C to G to D, we could demonstrate each of these strumming techniques. The first pattern that I wanna show is downstrokes. And that's pretty standard, and the speed of those downstrokes and how frequently you change to a next chord depends on the harmonic speed of the song. So just follow along with the guide and change with the guide. So in this case, the chord changes are gonna be one change every two beats. So in other words, two changes a measure with two downstrokes on each chord. Let's try that, and starting with the E minor. One, two, ready, go. The next pattern you're gonna see is simply up and down strokes, same basic idea. Let's try it. One, two, ready, go. And it's amazing how a faster strumming pattern, even though it's at the same overall tempo, can really add drive to a piece. When it comes to finger picking, I don't give specifics in the video of what to play so that you have freedom to play whatever you think sounds good. But here are a couple patterns that you can use that work in the song, and you might want to use both at different times in the song. It's up to you. So in finger picking, we're going to apply the thumb and use the thumb to pluck strings four and three. We'll use the first finger to pluck string two, and the second finger to pluck string one. Now in pattern number one here, you will pluck strings four, two, and one at the same time, and then pluck string three with your thumb and alternate between that. So playing this chord progression, two beats subdivision into an eighth is gonna sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and and at full tempo two ready go one and two and three and four For a second pattern to throw in there, I still suggest plucking strings four, two, and one at one time, but then pluck string three with your thumb, pluck string two with your first finger, and then pluck string one with your third finger. And it's gonna sound like this very slowly. One and two and ready and go and one and two 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 and and a little faster one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and four And you'll notice as I'm changing chords, I'm kind of dropping that last chord to be able to shift, and it doesn't sound bad. So that's a couple of different ways that you can play finger picking to add some more interest to the song. Other than playing the chords that are written and following along with the indicator, that's all that you need to know to play the song and have it sound good. Again, special thank you to Weird Potato Katricia for suggesting the song. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. So once again, thanks for watching, and as always, remember, ukulele, it's all about you.